Hey everybody, so today I'm going to really quickly go through, in my opinion, and in I, I believe in the pharmaceutical industry's opinion collectively as a whole, the most the top three most underrated positions and positions with the most potential for growth in the decade of 2020 and beyond. So the first one, as you can see here on my screen, is clinical research coordinator. And by the way, no surprise, all three of these positions are in the clinical research industry because I think if anything, coronavirus has shown that the pharmaceutical industry is completely dependent, society as a whole is completely dependent on research and development. And these are the least understood positions in the entire pharmaceutical industry, the most underrated and probably the best ones career-wise for anybody looking to start a career in the medical industry. So first one, clinical research coordinator. And as you can see here on Wikipedia, a clinical research coordinator is a person responsible for conducting clinical trials using good clinical practices under the oversight of a principal investigator. Basically, what the clinical research coordinator is, is it's a position at an investigative site or a research clinic, uh, and they are the ones who work with the investigator, with the doctor, who's a principal investigator, to see the patients in the trial, which are called study participants, sometimes they're referred to as subjects too, although it's better to refer to them as patients or study participants, and they're the ones who follow the protocols. Whatever the study it is that they're participating in, they're the ones who follow the protocol, work hand in hand with the principal investigator, and get the patient through the clinical trial journey. Whatever kind of clinical trial that is, they go from healthy volunteers, to oncology, to HIV, to diabetes, to ophthalmology, anything you can think of in the medical industry, there is research studies around that therapeutic area and there are clinical research coordinators which are the backbone of any clinical research study they are worth their weight in gold there is way high demand for clinical research coordinators there is a low supply of trained clinical research coordinators if you're interested in learning how to become a clinical research coordinator check out the links below for my CRC Academy, the Clinical Research Coordinator Academy. Clinical Research Coordinators are also referred to as CRCs or sometimes study coordinators. The next one is the Clinical Research Associate. So Clinical Research Associate actually get paid a lot more on average than a Clinical Research Coordinator. The, th the thing with Clinical Research Associate is that it's rarely entry level. It can be entry level if you are a registered nurse, a practicing registered nurse. Those are really the only cases I've seen where clinical research associate positions are open for research naive people, meaning people who have never worked in the research industry. Uh, it only applies to RNs. Otherwise, if you want to be a CRA, you have to have a bachelor's degree or better or international equivalent. And you should have some experience in the clinical research industry. And by some experience, it could mean two years or less. And right now, in 2020 and beyond, because we're talking about 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, if COVID showed us anything, anything at all about the clinical research industry, it's that we, the, our society, I mean, look, the world shut down during covid COVID-19, there may be more pandemics coming. In the age of CRISPR, which is really what we're getting into, there's, I mean, CRISPR, for those that don't know, just really quick, Wikipedia, okay, is a family of DNA sequences found in the genomes, um, such as bacteria. These sequences are derived from DNA fragments. Basically, it's like an open source way, platform to even create viruses. I mean, it's supposed to be meant to cure things like autism, uh, any genetic abnormalities. Eventually, there has a lot of potential here to cure a lot of these things. 
On the other hand, the uglier side of this is it also allows for the potential for just literally anybody who has access to a lab to create viruses. So there are many who say that we are just now entering the age of pandemics. So because of that, okay, clinical research is going to be at the forefront of the pharmaceutical industry for many decades to come, in my opinion. So 2020 and beyond is probably the best time to get into this industry. So clinical research associate, you need at least a bachelor's degree or international equivalent. You probably should start off as a clinical research coordinator and then become a clinical research associate in a year, two years, three years. Um, but again, if you're a registered nurse, you probably can get a CRA job with enough applications uh, because we were talking about how study coordinators, clinical research coordinators are in huge demand. Clinical research associates are in huge demand. Especially in 2020, what we've seen is because of COVID, there's, been, there's never been as many studies, as many clinical trials as there are right now. And that's not going to change anytime soon because of CRISPR and things like this. Uh, all the, or a lot of the uh, experienced CRAs and even clinical research coordinators, which we just discussed, have been allocated to COVID studies. And that leaves wide gaps for all the other conditions, Alzheimer's, gastroenterology, oncology, ophthalmology. Those are the ones that are hot right now, OBGYN. Uh, we need more CRAs. These are the people who monitor the trial. So unlike a clinical research coordinator who works at the research site level, so at the investigative site with the PI, with the principal investigator, and actually see the patients, clinical research associates have no patient interaction whatsoever. Clinical research associates are like auditors. Think of them like IRS auditors or tax auditors. They go to the investigative sites usually every four to eight weeks. Uh, they can do it remotely too now with all the tools coming out. They can do remote monitoring, but basically they monitor or audit the research clinics and the paperwork that the research clinics are submitting on behalf of the sponsor. So they usually work directly for the research pharmaceutical sponsor or for the clinical research organization which the pharmaceutical sponsor hires to audit or monitor the research sites. Clinical research associates typically make 65000 starting out I know some CRAs that make up to 300000 if they're independent contractors, as opposed to clinical research coordinators who could make, I mean, really like as little as $15 an hour when they're starting out. And they probably can get, I, I know many who make in the six figures as well, once they start running sites and becoming site directors. So that's clinical research coordinator, clinical research associate, and now we have one more. It's the principal investigator. So these are doctors. They have to be physicians. They have to be licensed in the state that they are going to be working in. And they usually are hired either by the research site, and the research site could be just a private site, a private clinic, a hospital, or an academic institution. And they're the ones who are responsible for the conduct of the study at their particular site. Usually when a sponsor is doing a clinical study, they need dozens of principal investigators across the country, and they rely on these principal investigators to enroll patients into the study and then to have safety oversight of their patients throughout the course of the study while following the protocol. The principal investigator usually supervises the clinical research coordinator. And then the clinical research associate is monitoring or auditing the work that the principal investigator and that the clinical research coordinator are conducting as they follow the clinical research protocol for a particular study. To be a principal investigator, you have to have, again, you have to be a medically licensed doctor, so an MD or a DO. You have to have an active license in the state that you are going to be seeing patients in. And the good thing about principal investigators, that could be a job. So you, a lot of them are employees. You can be a contractor or you can own your own research clinics.
or you can partner with an existing research clinic and negotiate some equity in that clinic because without you, without the principal investigator, the clinic can't exist. You need a principal investigator in order to be able to do studies, in order for the research clinic to do studies. So that's what the three positions are. And also I should say the clinical research coordinators can also, just like the principal investigators, eventually open their own clinics and be site owners as well, research site owners, but they do need to have principal investigators working with them. You can't run a clinical trial, you can't run a study without a principal investigator. So those are the top three underrated and most lucrative potentials in the pharmaceutical industry in 2020 and beyond. Hopefully this helps you out. Let me know what you think. We have a CRC Academy, we have a CRA Academy, and we also have a Principal Investigator Academy. So check out the links in the show notes or text me anytime, 949-415-6256. Take care.